Hey, it's Andrew Huang. If you're familiar with my Four Producers, One Sample series, we have a fun twist on it today. This was actually filmed a while ago at Loop, which is an event that Ableton puts on. Lots of great music talks and performances and workshops. At the most recent one, I hosted a panel where Ableton picked a sample. They posted it online at noon on a Friday and gave everyone until midnight to make a track out of it. Anyone around the world who wanted to take part. And that included me and two other producers who were with me on the panel, Ebony Smith and Night Feelings. We we all had 12 hours to make a track out of this sample, and in that 12 hours, we got 800 submissions. It was super cool to hear so many different takes on producing something using this really weird sample that'll play for you in a second. Uh, this video is a cut down showing just what the three of us on stage created, but I will link to where you can hear all of the submissions as well as a longer video of the whole panel. So here's the sample and the three of us listening to it for the first time, and then we'll show you what we made with it. That's it? 28 seconds. What? <laughs> there you go. Wow. All right. That's it. <laughs> <Whoa>. Wow. <laughs> There's a lot to play with there. So the first thing I wanted to do was chop the sample up into little bitty pieces and use those pieces as percussive elements. So I like to use a tool called Serato Sample, which basically allowed me to create really small chops of the sample. What I really love about Serato Sample is it will allow me to play them chromatically. By hitting this little piano icon, it allows me to actually find maybe some notes in the sample, which is cool. So the intro and some of the other elements that you hear in the track are actually really, really fine chops, which is how I usually like to work with samples. So for example, this little intro is just something that, is just something that I filtered up, but it was basically a performance of the actual sample chopped into little bitty pieces. Once I was able to play the sample kind of chromatically, I came up with some sort of melodic arrangements that allowed me to narrow down a key of like B minor. So after that, I just tuned all the drums to that and also tuned the piano parts that I played to that as well. For example, this electric piano part that kind of comes halfway through. Um, that is kind of around the key of B minor. Um, so I was able to try, you know, create some sort of melodic structure because I didn't really hear a ton of uh, melodic or chordal elements in the actual sample itself, but using Serato sample in that way allowed me to kind of find some sort of tones. So that was kind of my approach for that. Similarly to Ebony, I 
started with the sample and trying to see how I could edit it or morph it and create some kind of texture out of it. The tool that I used for that is called M Rhythmizer. It's kind of similar if, if anyone's ever used Fruity Loops, the gross beat like Ooh. function, <laughs> you know. Um, it has like stutters, repeats, reverses, filters, any kind of effect, and they're all on like a little timeline in like a four bar loop. I started out taking these two pieces of a sample and running it through that. And then I also used in Sound Toys this effect rack that does kind of like a gating pattern. I recorded from this channel while I was like playing around with the mix of it to kind of like make it go from full to like choppy. And then I stuttered it more. And I was just really into that one little, so I just kind of did that over and over. Kind of like towards the midsection, I was like, okay, I gotta use the sample more. And so I took this one piece of it and distorted it, just like the Ableton saturator. And I also had it side chaining hard to the kit. I was texting with Yasmin, who goes by LaFonda, who I work with a lot. And I had already been messing around with like some super distorted kind of guitar-ish sounding thing. And she's like, you should do a guitar solo. So I did. Used uh, this like contact thing called goth guitar. Sent both versions to my partner and his sister and they were like, you should definitely use the guitar version. I did was I just like brought the whole thing into Ableton and I just cut out individual pieces that I thought could become a musical element so like there's a pretty clean chord or uh, here's like that seagull noise the kind of foundation of the track were these two loops that I made out of the chord sounding parts of the track so I just sliced something up and uh, did a little filtering to make this And then I also made this loop. I kind of, I had two different ideas that I, that I developed based on those as the foundation and in classic Andrew fashion, I was like, let's not pursue one of these, let's do them both and see how we can mash them together, which is how the kind of middle part happened where I took the sample and just like made this transition, which is just, uh, all these automated envelopes on the transposition and the grain size. I used a couple like random bits for just like a little stab of atmosphere sometimes. That's just the sample pitched up a bit with some reverb on it. I chopped up some of the drums to make this. This is one of the earliest things I did where I was just experimenting with what the sample could sound like. And I took a chunk and I did a little uh, a pitch envelope on it to get this rise sound. 
I sung, I think it's like six layers of, of these oohs. And then this is my <laughs> favorite little weird addition that I put in. It's like this cheesy xylophone. You know? And that's like kind of cute and ridiculous, but when you have it mixed in underneath all the other stuff. Just like floats there nicely. Um, yeah, so that's what I did. All right, team, thanks for watching and liking and subscribing. I'd love to know what you think in a comment. There are lots of links in the description. There's the three of us in this video and where to follow us. There's Ableton's longer video of the whole panel. There's all the submissions that you can peruse if you want to. Uh, the sample is from an artist named Flora Yin Wong. I'll link to her too. Damn, there's a lot of links when you do a project with 800 people. Let me just throw one more in there. I dropped a new album recently. It's called Alabaster. Alabaster. Give that a spin. Uh, go click on a bunch of this stuff. Have fun.